In Norse mythology appears a celebrated hero named Beowulf, who killed two semi-human, man-eating monsters, and, as a last mighty effort, slew a fiery dragon, though he died from the poisonous bite of the dreadful creature. In those ancient times, the king of Denmark was Hrothgar, who gained great glory in battle and gathered round him a band of brave warriors for whose accommodation he built a vast and lofty palace of wood with wide gables in which they could all feast and rejoice together after their hard-won victories. Now, near this great hall, which was named Hielrot, was a wide open moor, stretching away into still wilder fens and swamps. And here lived a monster called Grendel, whose fiercest hatred was provoked by seeing men enjoy the good things of life. One night, after the warriors had held high revel and the mirth had aroused Grendel to the highest pitch of hatred, the monster stole into the dark and silent hall after the revellers had lain down to sleep, seized thirty of them, carried them away to his den and devoured them. For twelve years did Grendel repeat these dreaded visitations, and the Hrothgar went out to fight him. He never could slay him or overcome him, no matter what plan he tried. This sad story of repeated failure at last reached the ears of Beowulf, the bravest and strongest of all living men, whose home was in a faraway northern country, and Beowulf at once determined to sail the seas to Denmark, to go to Rothka's rescue. When the hero and his band of comrades landed and saw the Hall of Herot, they were astonished and thought it the largest and finest building on earth. The adventurer assured the king that he came not only as a friend, but with the set purpose of encountering the cruel monster in attempt to free the land forever from its awful scourges. So one night, the hero lay down in the hall with his own warriors around him, first doffing his armour, having resolved to undertake the great combat, unarmed. In the dead of night, the prowling monster came, seized one of the sleeping men, and tore him to pieces. But when he next attacked Beowulf, the hero who had kept awake, seized the outstretched arm of the fiend and held it, as in a grip of iron, then commenced a struggle which nearly shook the great oaken hall to pieces. When the king's men rushed into the assistance of the champion, Grendel's mighty magic rendered the blades of their sword powerless. Beowulf then put forth his strength to the very utmost and tore off the arm of the foul beast, whereupon the maimed monster rushed out sick to death, and in the morning was found lying dead in a pool of blood-red waves. But all the danger had not yet passed. In a gloomy lake amidst the fens lived Grendel's mother, a wolf-like witch as powerful and as wicked as her son, whose death she resolved to avenge. She commenced to seize and carry off the warriors as he had done. So Beowulf now undertook to do battle against her. This time he armed himself and riding across the wild moorland came to the blood-stained pool in which the witch mother lived, closely guarded by many seed wagons. Slaying the first of these guards, he plunged into the lake where the witch lay at the bottom awaiting him. With her fierce horned claws, she seized her enemy firmly. But as he was clad in proof armour, she failed to do him the least injury. Though she dragged him into the dark depths of the water cave in which she dwelt, here a long and deadly struggle was kept up. He, trusting solely to his mighty hand grip, and she, trying repeatedly to plunge a dagger into his heart, which the strength of his breastplate alone prevented. As Beowulf recovered his feet after one attack, his eyes caught sight of an old sword of immense size and weight 
hanging on the wall. Quickly seizing it, he dealt his grim enemy a fearful blow on the neck. And as it was the monster's own magic blade, the single stroke was sufficient, for she fell dead at once. After being laden with rich gifts and all manner of honours and rewards, Beowulf sailed away in great triumph. Many other adventures befell this hero of high renown. In after years, when he had reigned long in peace over his own people, a strange fiery dragon appeared in the midst of his land, flying swiftly across, spitting out coals of fire which burned up the fair dwellings of the realm and caused great distress among the people. So, once more, Beowulf donned his armour, buckled on his sword and went forth to do battle against a monstrous enemy. But, alas, though the gallant Beowulf slew the dragon, the venomous beast bit the hero in the neck from the deadly effects of which he died. His people did their departed hero every honour their customs taught them to render. They burnt his body on a tall cliff overlooking the sea, and there raised a great mound over his ashes to remind future generations of the mighty deeds done by valiant Beowulf in the brave days of old.